topic is about the flooding of Owl Woods. As nature takes its course, it is inevitable for disasters to happen, especially when it affects mankind. Natural disasters are one thing, but what if it was intentional? Inundation of floods that wiped away everything you once knew. Uprooting from your home, loss of access to relatives, a community washed away. It's now all just a story to tell the next generations of a lost town known as Elbowitz, North Dakota. Floods and work. Floods begin when soil and vegetation cannot absorb rain or snow. Then water runs off the land. Overflow of the Missouri River would occur along its path and course and damage certain cities like Bismarck, Mandan. But for native lands, it helped keep the lands fertile. In order to save the soil, mankind, as far back as ancient times, would create reservoirs, dams, levees, and floodways. And the U.S. government created the Flood Control Act of 1944, where Congress approved 123 projects to aid river regulation, flood control, and power development. Elbow Woods of North Dakota, on the reservation of Fort Berthold, belonged to the Mandan, Hidatsa, and Rikura Nation. The population of Elbow Woods was about 200 people. Elders described the community as quiet, everyone knew each other and their families. People were lawful. Elbow Woods was a hub for eight other surrounding communities. The town held the Indian Agency's headquarters boarding school, a day school, hospital, where my grandmother was born, um, jail, and various stores and shops. People were self-sustaining, raised cattle, and grew their own crops. Everyone gardened. Extended family members helped each other, and also children. If you didn't, you were considered lazy amongst the community. They were the richest lands in North Dakota. Elders also mentioned the nostalgia of togetherness. In this picture down below here, in the right-hand corner, it's in 1911. They were the prize winner at Elbow Woods Indian Fair for gardening. Mandan, Hidatsa, and Arikara people were considered the first people in North Dakota as farmers. Garrison Dam began construction in 1947. America's fifth largest dam, cost over $299 million, was routed originally to go through Williston, but Corps of Engineers changed route without approval from the U.S. government, then routed through Indian Territory. Also, the planning of the dam was approved without consent of affected tribes. The dam separated the reservation into five isolated sites. In 1951, families were told to pack up what they could bring to a new town. <laughs> up on top, elders would say. In 1953, the town began to flood. 94% of the reservation's land was inundated. We lost timber, late night resources, habitat for wild game, shelter for cattle, various berries, plant medicines, ceremonial areas, cemeteries, and 8% of the reservation's road system. It took a year for Abowitz to completely flood, which now lies 100 feet below the water. And then on this, here you can see, this is the original Missouri River, this light blue line. And you can see, like, Abowitz and the other communities around the river, they live near the river. And this darker blue area is Lake Sakakawea, which is now where the water is now. So you can see how the reservation is now in different segments. So if you lived in White Shield and you wanted to go all the way to Mandaree or Twin Buttes, it's now an hour or two drive when usually it was just minutes away. On June 2nd, 1948, Chairman George Gillette 
As you can see here, this is a picture when he was in the term 1946 through 1948. This was a forced signing with the Army Corps of Engineers. You can, they call this picture on the left-hand side, Leaping George Gillette, as he's in tears. I put a quote on the bottom. Today, elders believe the separation from the flood is the host to social problems, including addiction, depression, loss of cultural identity, which leads alienation for generations to come. The flood signified the end of a cosmic relationship with the Missouri River that had defined the Mandan, Panatza, and Nations for centuries. We are still recovering. 